Sir, I have downloaded the Google Tulip video in case you want me to play it because then uh, you have to do screen sharing a couple of times. So, in case you want, I can play the video. No, no, I'll play it. Yeah. In case there's a okay. problem, I'll let you know. Right? I'll I'll show sure, you. Sure. Sure. Okay. Then I'll share you the uh, link. Okay. But I think I should be able to do it. Right. I think we already have some participants with us. So yes, yes, that's right. Yes. Afternoon, teachers. It's lovely to see you today. Uh, we should be starting, I think, in another three odd minutes. So, do we have some teachers, somebody coming on the panel with us? That's all from Saint Luke's. I think Nutan Ma'am is supposed to join. That's what I'm told. Yeah. Uh, she's joining in next two minutes, sir. Some yes. error is showing on her end. So okay. she's joining. No, sure. So could you help solve that, Sakshi, so that we can? Yes, have... sir. I already had word. She's saying, "Give me two minutes. Uh, if she faces any problem, she will be giving a call." Okay. Okay. Thank you. I mean, couldn't we have had all the teachers uh, here? Yeah, all the teachers of the school. Oh, I'm saying in the panel itself, so we can have it interactive. Yeah. Okay. That can be done from our end. I don't think it should be a problem. Okay. So once you start the uh, session, or we can do it now also if you want. Yeah, I think that'll be. Yeah, yeah. Why do do that? We get the teachers. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So when I'm just make me the co-host, so we both can do it. So it will be a little yeah. bit. That's right. I've already made you the co-host. Okay, done. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, teachers. And we'll be starting in a couple of minutes. So do we know if Nutan Ma'am is here? Sure. No, she can't. Not as yet. Oh, we need to check. Just wait, I'll just check. I can see Shivani Ma'am. Yes. Sakshi, just check with her. I can't see her here. Nutan no, Ma'am, I'll call her. Ashish will start in, uh, let's say, one minute more. One minute we'll start. Sure, and that's fine with me. Karim, I think uh, uh, Nutan Mem and others can join. So we'll, we'll start in a minute's time. So once sure. again, good afternoon, teachers. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Nutan Bharadwaj from St. Luke Senior Secondary School. Am I audible to everyone there in the meeting? Hello, Nutan, ma'am. You are audible. We can't see you, though. I... Uh, yeah, I haven't turned on the video as uh, yet, though I was trying to do the same, but somehow I don't know why it is not possible at my end, it says. It doesn't give the permission to the app to turn on the video. Okay, no worries. I think you're loud and clear. 
and i think it's yeah thank you so shivani much suits, so that must be you know okay, uh, yeah from shivani suits uh, shivani suit ma'am's okay. id i have logged in but yeah this is nutan bharatwaj from st luke senior secondary school lovely uh, to meet you nutan ma'am i think it's uh, <laughs> do you can't see me but thank you for using the words lovely for me <laughs> absolutely i think uh, it's great to be with all the teachers of st luke's and uh, i think uh, uh, if you allow could i start uh, nutan ma'am i think it's one or two and it's time to start yeah sure sir sure 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 fantastic so we also had lavina ma'am here uh, lavina ma'am you might want to uh, unmute yourself good afternoon sir atul good afternoon lavina ma'am good afternoon ma'am good afternoon everybody there good afternoon good sister. sister good afternoon good afternoon we can continue fantastic so uh, once again good afternoon to everyone and Uh, welcome to Ideas That Matter. Ideas That Matter is a series of webinars that Shulini has started, and the whole objective of Ideas That Matter is to reach out to teachers across India with cutting-edge topics. Uh, we've actually done more than uh, 250 such discussions across the country with leading schools, uh, starting from, of course, Solon, and we've gone right up to south of India, uh, Kerala and Karnataka, and we've gone right up to the east of India. So it's uh, wonderful to be back home with St. Luke's. Uh, I think many of us are uh, ex-students of yours. Uh, uh, I graduated, I did my 10th in 1986. We also have Ashish with us, who's going to be Hi. talking to us today about artificial intelligence. Ashish is a 1984 10th uh, uh, graduate, if I'm not wrong, Ashish. And no, you're not wrong. some of you, we know, you know, Mridula Didi, who's the, I can see her here, uh, was a neighbor of ours and uh, I think also now teachers with St. Luke's. So lovely to be back. It's exciting uh, and always nervous to talk to St. Luke's because, you know, uh, I still see myself as a 10 standard student, Ashish, giving a presentation to all our wonderful teachers and highly learned teachers, I would say. So the topic for today is going to be artificial intelligence. Uh, we're going to take you through the journey of AI, what it means. Uh, and more importantly, how could AI transform teaching? What would it mean to teachers like you? And Ashish uh, will take us through that. Like I said, Ashish is an alumnus of St. Luke's. Uh, Ashish uh, uh, went and did his B.Tech from Punjab College, uh, then his MBA from IIM Calcutta. Uh, he's been in banking for a very, very long time, but a keen participant in the technology space. My name is Adil Khosla. I am also with Shulini. I'm the vice chancellor here. Uh, I am a B.Tech from IIT Kanpur and also an MBA and uh, have been in teaching for the last 10 years. So I won't take more time. I'll hand it over to Ashish. Our uh, format for the day is going to be Ashish presenting his thoughts on artificial intelligence. I think it'll be lovely to get questions from all of you. So any questions that you have, please put it on the small chat bot you have or the Q&A and we'll be delighted to answer all your questions. I think that's how we'll also get energy and we'll get a dialogue running. So that'll be the best way. Uh, in between, probably I'll also come in for my thoughts. So Ashish, you can bring me in between uh, your presentation uh, for uh, five to seven minutes and we'll get into the Q&A. So let's go forward for this very exciting 45 to 50 minutes on artificial intelligence. Ashish, over to you. Great. Uh, thank you, Atul. And uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. And uh, I am logging in today from Dubai. And it's a real pleasure indeed for me. And I guess there are two reasons. One, as uh, Atul just mentioned, I'm an alumni of St. Luke's. And Atul and I, we uh, owe quite a bit to St. Luke's and the education we've had there. And secondly, probably it's the first time that I'm in a classroom full of teachers and I don't have to worry about an exam at the end of it. So uh, with that, we'll start on this uh, primer on uh, artificial intelligence and AI. And give me a second, let me just load it. So, uh, you know, we, we've seen artificial intelligence around us uh, everywhere, uh, right from, uh, you know, if you search in Google uh, and it gives you a, a list of uh, answers based on your search, or if you're buying a shirt and the next time around it tells you which shirt to buy, 
uh, or if you have Apple or Siri, uh, you know, you can speak and the answer comes out to you. Uh, we've seen AI in almost every application. Uh, I'm not sure if you have Amazon uh, and Netflix, uh, Amazon videos and Netflix and uh, Himachal, I'm not sure, but if you do that, then the moment you see a, a movie or a serial, immediately after that, it comes out a set of recommendations. Uh, so these are examples of AI. And uh, so the question is, what is AI? So it's when uh, machines and computers, when they learn, they think, they communicate and, and do what uh, it seems as if human intelligence uh, could have previously only done, and that's artificial intelligence. Uh, but the one thing about artificial intelligence is that, you know, and that's a question that, uh, you know, of teachers and even students ask me, I said, who needs to know about AI? Uh, if you're looking at the future, then the answer is everyone needs to know about artificial intelligence. You know, it's like uh, in the 90s, in the early 90s, uh, if somebody were to say, I'm never going to have a cell phone in my uh, life because it's not going to be relevant. But today we know, uh, you know, a cell phone is almost a mandate to be able to uh, go around one's life. So in the next five to six years, artificial intelligence will be part of the mainstream uh, efforts and, and initiatives that we do in any field. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you're in medicine, for example, definitely, you know, need to know about artificial intelligence. They're saying the basic analysis can be done by artificial intelligence uh, in art, in psychology, in history. But most of all, and that's coming out into play in a major way, that in teaching, artificial intelligence will actually get to play a major role. And I actually strongly believe that the teachers actually mold the future of India and that of the world. And by using artificial intelligence, they get an extra tool and insights to taking the role of education to the next level. So broadly speaking, I guess everybody needs to know about artificial intelligence. And definitely those students of yours, by the way, who want to study software and AI uh, and take a lucrative jobs in the corporate industry. Now, the only uh, point I'd like to make right at the start is that there is this fictional concept of AI, and I'm sure we've all seen these movies. At the bottom, we have uh, what's left of Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Terminator, and uh, you know that's an AI that is out to destruct mankind. And at the top, we have uh, iRobot, which is a robot who's kind of confused about uh, how to help humanity and what the whole essence of consciousness is. But this is something called general artificial intelligence. And general artificial intelligence basically means an entire human being being replicated uh, in a machine. And the point is that's incredibly hard to come by. Uh, you know, that, and the reason for that is that we have behind us uh, four or five billion years of evolution and a brain uh, has uh, billions of neurons and, and the functions that they perform are, you know, so far, you know, they are so complicated that we don't fully understand yet and replicating uh, them is beyond us. So generally AI probably is a few years, uh, probably a few decades uh, in the future. What we have when we call artificial intelligence uh, these days is called special purpose intelligence. Uh, and that's uh, AI that is specifically applicable to only one field. So for example, if you have a chess playing game, so you have a lot of AI in games, if you have a chess playing game, that AI can only play chess. It cannot play any other game. It cannot say hello to you. You have AIs that convert speech to text. So that particular AI, of course, can only do speech to text. It can't play chess. The other day, I, by the way, I'm, I, I did tell you I'm uh, logging in from Dubai. Uh, I was there and uh, you know there's a lane there where driverless cars are allowed. So initially you feel very, uh, you know, you're very surprised. You see a car and there is nobody there in the front seat. There's nobody there in the driver's seat. Three people sitting in the back. Uh, and that's uh, driverless cars being driven by AI. But the point is that uh, while these, uh, the AI is driving the car, it would not be able to do anything else. It would not be able to say hello to you. It would not be able to play chess. It would not be able to do a web search uh, or, or a speech to text uh, conversations. The point is, special purpose AI is something, that is, is something that is built just for one area. Sorry, was that a question, please? 
Okay. Now, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about uh, games for a moment because we're teachers and I'm sure a lot of our students are involved in games. And interestingly, a lot of uh, work around artificial intelligence happen has happened around the world of games. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, games versus human beings is always an issue that has been, uh, you know, uh, up in the news. And people used to say there's a game called, game called Geopardy, which is a lot of, has a lot of combinations, a lot of insight. And people said that uh, computers can never beat human beings at that. But IBM's Watson defeated the Geopardy world champion in 2011. Uh, and then people said that, you know, all the games that all these kids play, you know, there would be some human champions who can defeat them all the time because, you know, there's a lot of skill involved. You push buttons and you understand how the uh, game uh, plays out. But DeepMind, and that's uh, an AI-based uh, computer program, it defeated all human uh, level performers in Atari games. And Atari is the uh, most popular, one of the most popular uh, provider of games. <laughs> then there's this 3,000 year old game called Go. It's a Chinese game and it's very popular. It involves a lot of computation, a bit of skill, uh, sorry, a, a, a bit of luck as well. And people used to say, no one can beat Go, uh, beat the world champion in Go. Uh, for these reasons, but 2016, AlphaGo defeated the world champion, 4-3. Uh, uh, by the way, there was a bug in the last game, and that's why the uh, the champion actually won the last game. The, the score could have been 5-2 or 6-1. And lastly, human poker. And poker, as we know, involves a little bit of skill, but a little bit of intuition, but also a lot of luck. Because, you know, you don't know how which way the dice or the cards will roll out. And people said, surely uh, AI cannot consistently beat uh, human beings on uh, in poker. But uh, in 2017, a few years back, CMU, which is Carnegie Mellon's uh, AI called Libretus, defeated the top poker uh, players uh, in 2017. So what I'm trying to say is that AI, specialized AI is getting so specialized that it has outperformed human beings in the areas that we designate to them. Uh, this is for me, the whole, the whole concept of AI happened in 1997 uh, when Gary Kasparov played IBM's Deep Blue. By the way, in 1996, he played, uh, and I used to play a lot of chess. In 1996, uh, Gary Kasparov uh, Gary, uh, played Deep Blue and he won. And people like me said, yeah, of course, Gary Kasparov, he's been the reigning world champion for almost a decade. He's supposed to be the best player of chess ever. Of course, he'll beat a computer. What's so great about that? But come 1997, uh, and you can see Gary on the left, uh, uh, Deep Blue uh, defeated Gary Kasparov. And in fact, these days, you don't even hear of computers playing uh, with uh, human beings anymore. It's, it's, a grand, it's a given that they will be able to uh, uh, defeat human beings. So you don't hear about Gary Kasparov or Vishwanath and Anand playing uh, computers. And, and, you know, I just thought about that for a moment because I myself play a fair bit of chess. I was actually the uh, chess champion of my college, small college. Uh, and then I picked up playing chess back uh, online uh, around 10 years back. I started doing pretty well against human uh, opponents. Uh, but then I downloaded an AI program called Stockfish. And after that, I've been going uh, from back to worse because I, I keep losing all the time. And then I analyzed that and some of our teachers were, uh, who teach maths, physics, or science are generally inclined towards maths uh, can actually compute this is that, uh, you know, when I play a game and in this artificial situation, I can move in 25 possible ways and the computer can move back in 25 ways. So if you're looking at somebody wanted to think through 10 moves deep or 25 moves deep, the point is how many moves would I have to think if I want to analyze and think of 10 moves deep? And the answer to that is, you know, if you look at this number, so many, this number, and, and the, the amount in gray hair is a billion. So I'll probably have to think of 95 billion moves uh, if I want to think 10 moves deep and think of all the things. That's, that's the reason, you know, I actually get uh, defeated by, uh, uh, computers, I can't think 95 billion moves deep. 
but if somebody wants to think of 25 billion moves deep, and that is for grandmasters and world champions, then you see all the zeros in gray are a billion. So this is a billion billion. So this is 8,881 billion billion. And that's the reason why uh, human beings uh, and grandmasters, they all get defeated by uh, AI. And incidentally, the way the uh, AI works actually is you download uh, AI and it's actually dumb. So the first time you can start defeating it, but as it keeps playing more and more people, and it also starts playing against itself, it keeps getting the insights and stores the memory of how to play. So, uh, you know, the caution is that, you know, what's AI and, you know, coming out of the popular uh, concept driven by science fiction, uh, there are four options. And one is that it's either thinking or is it acting like human beings? Uh, or is it thinking or acting rationally? And that's a serious question because, you know, people, when they look at AI, they say, what is consciousness? And the whole thought is that uh, while we do and we are aware of what we're doing, for example, when I speak right now, I'm aware that I'm speaking to this audience. When a computer does that, it's not aware of what it's doing. So like human beings is something that is very difficult to replicate. Uh, the other point is thinking itself is a point of great philosophy and we don't know what is it to think. So artificial intelligence right now is just restricted to this last quadrant, which is it is systems that act rationally. Rather, it's systems that seem to act rationally. And that's AI for us. Now, I'm gonna take a small break and uh, I am assuming you've all heard the name of Alan Turing. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this movie uh, called The Imitation Game. It was out a few years back. So uh, quick poll if you don't mind. And uh, uh, you know, if you can just tell me, uh, uh, who do you think Alan Turing was? Uh, a, B, C, D, and we can have a faster fingers first. A, it was, uh, he, he's, the, he's the scientist who invented the first AI program that beat Gary Kasparov in chess. Uh, uh, he invented B, he invented the world's first computer program that could run an AI program. C, he wrote a rule to identify if a software could be called intelligent. Or D, he wrote the world's first artificial intelligence program. Uh, so let's have a poll and it's, uh, you know, to be very frank, I'm very happy running a poll for St. Luke's teachers. So let's see uh, uh, what the answers come out like. Uh, so I'm, I'm seeing some answers here. Uh, I don't see any A or Bs, I see a lot of Cs and Ds. Uh, I see some Bs as well now. I can see the C is picking up now. Okay. Yes, I, I think we have lots of answers on almost around I'm not sure, around 30 answers now. So it looks like, uh, you know, the common consensus here is, is D. Uh, which is uh, actually not the right answer because the right answer is actually C, uh, which was the second guess there. Uh, are we sharing the results? Uh, okay, so the answer actually here is C. Uh, so Alan Turing, you know, he uh, was a British scientist uh, who uh, actually made the world's first uh, working computer program called Enigma uh, in 1940s. And he wrote a rule to identify if a software could be called intelligent. And that's the, that's the benchmark rule that people still use uh, to, to find out is, is a computer intelligent or not? And that's the rule that Alan Turing wrote. Uh, and you know what he essentially said? He said, human beings are intelligent. Now to be called intelligent, a machine must produce an answer that is not distinguishable from that of a human. Uh, so let me let me explain, uh, you know, what essentially would be is that suppose, uh, you know, uh, in front of you is a locked room and you can't look inside that room. 
And inside that room, there's either a computer and a hu or a human being, and you don't know which one of it is there. And you ask a question to that, to that computer or human being in, inside that room, and you keep getting answers. And now if you're not able to figure out if it's a computer or a human being, but actually it's a computer, uh, then that computer is passed the Turing test, which means if a computer can quote unquote fool you into believing it's a human being, uh, uh, it's passed the uh, Turing test. So in incidentally, no computer for the last 80 years has been able to actually pass the Turing test. Uh, there's a prize called the Lubner prize. Uh, that's a couple of, that's a million dollars. So if anybody wants to try, uh, you know, they give out a million dollars for the program that comes the closest to, uh, you know, beating uh, the Turing test. And incidentally, there have been people who've been able to uh, fool people for a very short period of time that they're human beings by, uh, you know, rephrasing questions and all. But the question uh, about uh, Turing's test is slightly deeper. And there's something called the Chinese room argument. In fact, I'm reading a book called uh, Blind Spot by uh, Peter Watts. It's a science fiction book. And what happens there is that an alien uh, comes into contact with human beings. And the thing is that the alien does not know the human language, but it knows exactly what people are saying to each other. So when somebody says, how are you to the alien? The alien knows that the most common response to that is, I'm fine, thank you, how are you today? And when you say, uh, okay, do you think this is valid or not? And then it says, uh, uh, it knows the most common answer is, uh, you know, my opinion is not uh, so important. What matters is whether you think it's valid or not. So the Chinese room argument is that somebody could not know Chinese and sit in a room and just pass out answers without knowing what these are based on previous responses. And uh, based on that, you would uh, you might feel that somebody knows what he or she is, uh, 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 you know, he or she knows Chinese. And that's the whole point about computers and consciousness and ethics is that they do not know what they're doing. They're just taking a set of rules and communicating back to us. And based on that, uh, uh, obviously one wonders whether they will be able to do things like creativity and invention themselves. Uh, so here's another poll coming in. So what is artificial intelligence? Uh, can you run the poll again? Uh, uh, Vinam Roshika. So again, uh, what is AI? AI is uh, when a software program is A, more intelligent than humans, B, when it can be creative, C, well, it seems to us a uh, computer can think, and D, when a, a software program behaves rationally. And by the way, we're getting a lot of answers there and quite a few are right. So uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of C's and D's. No hints there, A is picking up. Uh, and then I'm getting a lot of uh, C and D's and A and D's now. Uh, right. Now it's a close one now between A and D. Yeah, C is left behind. And I think she is showing us the results. The answer is D, which actually is right. Uh, <clears throat> so artificial intelligence is when a software program behaves rationally. So we don't know whether thinking or not is possible. More intelligent than humans is a question because intelligence is a very variable thing. And one doesn't know what it actually means to be uh, intelligent. So uh, it's basically when it seems that there is some rationality to their uh, behavior. And that's AI. And now let me show you this uh, video very quickly. Let me share this. Sorry, give me a minute again.
Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, is it visible and audible? Uh, yes, sir. Right, thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dardanellas produce about 50% of all flowers in the world. The most famous one of all, the tulip, of course. Flowers are really remarkable organisms. We've known for decades that they can actually communicate to each other through their root system. For the past uh, two years, Wageningen University has been working uh, very closely with Google to use cutting-edge technology uh, to look deeper into communication with plants. Hello. We collected an incredible amount of information. Using automated machine learning, we turned this information into a new rudimentary language, which is becoming more and more sophisticated over time. The more we listen to nature, the more we discover the amazing things it has to say. Okay, Google, talk to my tulip. What do you want? Water, please. We've applied all this research into our latest product, Google Tulip. Two granddaughters, Frances, who's just had a second baby. That is so interesting. And... <laughs> Finished. <laughs> Nothing left. More. Yeah. You promised more water. At Kuykenhof, we're very excited about Tulip technology. We like to know what tulips need, and what better way than to ask them. I need water. water. More light. Please water. improve humidity. What is please come here. More space. No, no more compost. No water. Thank you. Who are you? Why are there so many like light light this way. More light. Of course, this is only no, the beginning. No. We're rolling out the tulip language in the beginning of April, but we're already well underway with several updates. Hello? No. Cactus. Leave me alone. It's so great not to have a one-way relationship with the tubes anymore. What is the meaning of my existence? Tulip is a breakthrough in human-plant communication, letting users around the world communicate with any tulip. OK, Google. Play my favorite music. Uh, yeah. That's right. Uh. Okay, so that was uh, Google uh, Tulip. Just give me a minute. Let me go back to my presentation. So uh, we take a break here and Atul can come in with any questions. But the reason I actually showed this video, uh, can you see my presentation back again? Yes, sir. It's good. Yeah, so the reason I showed this video actually is that this was actually an April Fool's joke by Google in 2019. And Google actually is one of the cutting edge companies in the world on AI. And what they thought was a joke in 2019, uh, assuming that uh, the world would never come close to this, in the next two years, which is, uh, you know, it's barely been two years, there's been a lot of research around uh, how AI can actually break the barrier between uh, human and other organism communication, which is getting senses and getting ideas about how plants and uh, animals, including uh, dogs, cats, and birds actually communicate. So the point is, what do you think is science fiction today? In just two years time, it is uh, coming closer and closer to reality. And which is how fast artificial intelligence is progressing these days. Yeah, so with that, we'll take a break. So that's the first part of my uh, presentation, which is what is artificial intelligence? And the next part is how can teachers use it? Yeah. So that, that's really where, you know, Ashish, I would like to come in and, uh, you know, what a wonderful presentation so far. So as you were presenting, I was just thinking about, will my life as a teacher change? Or will the life of students change? I mean, it's really changed post COVID. Everyone is on Zoom or some other platform, but can we see more changes in education happening? Uh, I was just thinking about a situation where, you know, I don't have to remember books anymore. I can put the book into some sort of software, which sort of gives me summary answers to all the difficult questions. Uh, why should I remember anything as a student, right? I should only be understanding and be creating things. So I'm very intrigued for you to answer these questions and I'm sure so with the teachers. But more importantly, I think a lot of teachers ask this question to me that 
is a teacher going to be redundant in the future in another 10 15 years will computers take over will computers become teachers what's going to be the new role of a teacher in the digital age i think these are very interesting questions that all of us have and we'd love you to answer those questions and i think the last one would be if i as a teacher have to promote the understanding of ai within my students what should i do how should i go about making them learn ai how do i bring uh, you know ai into the curriculum uh, etc so these are thoughts which i have i think we're also experimenting with these a lot at shulini you've brought in a lot of technology into the way we teach at shulini uh, so would love to hear a lot of that from you right now ashish i think it's probably before, be before i i go to my presentation and that's the first thing i'll have to answer is uh what's going to happen to the role of things like uh professions like uh, medicine and uh, teaching where definitely artificial intelligence is coming in a big way right so you know if you actually look at it where is it that uh, ai is getting uh, is beating human beings is where you have a definite set of rules uh, and things like games and things like computing and things like even driving cars right what computers are not good at at all is empathy um and uh, creativity yeah and that's where you know uh, if i were to give you the example of medicine they say you know it's that little bit of faith that the doctor passes on to the patient that is as important as the medicine uh and that's where uh, definitely uh, an ai program will not be able to quote and quote displace a human being and it's even more so in uh, teaching because it's not about uh, reading a book it's about inspiring the student it's about understanding what the student actually needs and different students actually have different needs and using that to inspire students to go into the next level of their learning i'm so glad you bring the word inspiration ashish because i remember when i was in school uh, there were three four teachers who inspired me uh, to do whatever little i did in life uh, whether it was reading a book or it was reading uh, history you know i remember there was a there's a book that you and i would read uh, the encyclopedia of history of the world uh, or it was doing experiments in science and uh, and uh, my belief about education is that uh, we as teachers are in the, actually in the business of inspiration if we can inspire that spark into our students then pretty much i think half of work is done and of course we've got computers now to do the boring stuff that we would do as teachers but we'd love to hear more about you so i can see you bringing up this presentation right right so i'll just spend around maybe 5 6 minutes maybe we can have some interaction from the teachers as well yeah, we'd Very love to hear easy. questions from your teachers so uh, please yeah and we have just just to answer your question and let's start with this unless you got a question here go ahead ashish okay so if you look at ai in education i think there are two roles and the first role is that let's face it you know whether you want to be a historian or a software engineer or a banker or a teacher uh next 5 years you definitely need to learn ai and that's the first role is to encourage students to learn ai but more importantly it is how do we use ai to make students learn better so that's that's at the core of how we can use ai and you can actually enable students to learn better using artificial intelligence and very quickly just to give you a few examples uh, there's something called individualized learning paths and separate homework for every student so using ai you can actually say for example that atul and i remember atul you didn't do very well in your class 9 sanskrit exam right isn't it eight, so you eight, were in the top one or, sorry eighth standard eighth standard right so you were in the top first to second position for every subject and i think you were in the bottom uh, bottom bottom of the sanskrit uh, uh, exam right so probably with ai we can figure it out early that somebody like atul probably needs some extra support in sanskrit right okay or doesn't need to learn sanskrit at all can can study more of english right so you can actually have individualized learning paths for every student and separate homeworks for every student which can be given automatically by the computer uh, the second thing that computers can do very very effectively is that they can map student interest and potential with learning so they can actually find out who are the students who are more interested in say maths who are the students who are more interested in english or history and accordingly having mapped that they can kind of uh, run specialized courses courses for those students and and a thought that is coming out more and more in education is that we currently ban students in by age group 
and an age group like 3 to 4, 8 to 9, 14 to 15. And the thought is, however, different students develop differently. So an eight-year-old uh, might be the same level as a 10-year-old in, say, English or math, but at the level of a six-year-old in some other subjects. So the thought is, why don't you start mapping students with their potential and their interests instead of age? And you can have a bit of uh, uh, diversion there. Yeah. Uh, and AI in teaching can come in so many different forms. Uh, you know, it can actually help you take better tests, have uh, predicting student potential also, particular subjects, in designing exams on the basis of student performances, which is why should everybody go and give the same exam? If uh, somebody needs a little bit more help on the board, that exam is a basic level, more, rather than a more complicated level. And uh, the other thing is how do you make uh, learning itself more interesting and there are several examples you can help uh, in extracurriculars like uh, uh, and we'll talk about that in a bit you can help uh, kids be better debaters you can convert any uh, lesson into an interactive fun quiz you can actually even help uh, kids write poetry and we'll come to that next actually which is the example of verse by verse and why don't we try it out here if we have a minute here with any uh, of these St. Luke's teachers so we can request uh, Mridula Didi to come on, unmute herself and, uh, are you there, uh, Mridula? Yeah, 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 I'm here. Uh, have I unmuted? You're going to make it the scapegoat here, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, always, as always. <laughs> I'm ready. Hi to both of you. I'm How good. are we doing? Are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good, good. 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 Nice to see you. So, you know, what we'll do is we'll, uh, this is an AI written by Google. And one minute, you know, one minute. I need to get my screen, you know. I'm not getting the verses where it's written. Uh, okay. I don't know. Okay, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, I'll, I'll I think verse by verse. I'll, I'll, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll guide you through the process. Okay, okay. And what Google says is that let's have a few, uh, I guess, up to three poets to inspire you with a poem. <laughs> and uh, so we can choose three. Uh, Emily Dixon, let's choose a bit dark, but let's choose Emily Dixon one. What do you think? Fine, I'll go with you. All right. Okay. Then who else do you want here? Robert Frost. Would the yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert yeah. Frost, an all-time favorite. Yeah. And then we can have. Uh, uh, do you like uh, Poe, Edgar Allan Poe? Mm. Not really. Fine. Okay. Okay. Who do you prefer, uh, Longfellow? More philosophical. Less macabre. Uh, actually, I'm not wearing my specs also, so I don't know your choices. Okay. So let's, <laughs> I've let's become old. Let's, let's so, go okay, with... we'll go with Pope. Yeah. Right. So, we have three po uh, poets, and what they'll do is they'll inspire you to uh, write your poem, right? Okay, all right. So, uh, we go to next. So, what kind of poem do you like to write? And, uh, you know, what's the rhyming scheme you'd prefer? A, B, A, B. I think A, B, B is A, B, A, B is good, yeah. Okay, let's move. So all you have to do, uh, uh, Mridula ma'am, the first line, the first line of your, of your. Okay, all right. Uh, then these guys will come and help you. Get okay, it. fine. All right. Uh, uh, I love, I love to hear the rain falling down. Wow, that's a nice line. I love to hear the rain falling down. Okay. Um, uh, anything else? No, it shouldn't match, no, with the. I, we want an A B A B scheme, huh? Doesn't matter. So we're gonna we don't gonna go this. So I love to hear the rain falling down. And Peter Patter, okay. Peter Patter. Uh, oh, you want to say Peter Patter, Peter Patter? Now it's too late. Should I go back? Okay, all right, fine, fine. But no, actually, no, Peter Patter, okay. Peter Patter would have been a very nice. Uh, okay, so now we have got a little bit of inspiration, uh, and uh, you know. Uh, what do you want to say? Uh, you want to talk about flowers across my country? I'll have every flower. Uh, you want to say back to the happy winds, uh, which steal a note away? Uh, you want to talk about? Ah, this is, I think, the winds would sound fine with it. Away. So you, you, you want to change this line a bit? Back to the happy winds, we steal a note away. So you want to say that, uh, 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 you know, you want to use that line and kind of replace that a bit? All uh, right. No, no issues. We can do that. So we say, uh, I love to hear the rain falling down and the happy wind and the winds 
that blow and uh, play the notes uh, and play the notes away, right? Something like that. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. And also, the wind. Maybe we could shorten the second sentence a little. Yeah, bit. we'll do that. So also the winds play play their notes away, right? Yeah, that would sound. Okay. Uh, and now mm -hmm. you have uh, 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 suggestions again. We have uh, uh, you want to talk about uh, subtracting my single life like a single bird. That's uh, what uh, Emily Dixon says. You want to uh, talk about birds behind my native, 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 native town. Uh, so you want to make it a bit more uh, uh, serious. Yeah. Let's hope the lines connect a bit, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I love to hear the rain but... falling down and also the winds play their notes away. Yep. And uh, where can I see this? Acha, I can see the suggestions here. On the right, right? You want to talk about your right. town now? Uh, yeah, good idea. Let's talk about the town. Uh, so this is behind. Uh, yep. What does it say? My God, my eyesight. It's behind my native, native, native town. So you want to use a... You, yeah, you we'll use this one. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, so you want to say something more serious like, but alas, what's happening today in our uh, native uh, town? Yeah, something like oh, that? fine. Yes, yes, we can relate it to the COVID situation. <laughs> yes, but alas, what is happening today in my... Native town. Okay. Okay. Right. There you go. Now you're into the last line. And you've been using Emily Dixon, so you know you need to be a bit more serious. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. So uh, uh, now she's saying. Uh, uh, mm. Now she's broken this A B A B A B at all totally. So let's go to. And the rhyming scheme is all a mess. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, look at look at. Uh, uh, Longfellow, he's saying uh, wherever I can ground this way, so he's saying way and day, and uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Po is saying mm -hmm. the days are very, very, are very of weary day. The terrible conspire with the world to say, tempting uh, tempest down the wilderness by day. Yeah, so ways of frost, by the way. Where is Robert Frost? So Robert Frost is the one in the middle. He's the one in the middle. Okay, I think yeah. he should have this a little happier. Yeah. Whatever can round across the very way, sharing my teacher. Well, uh, we can go with any of them. <laughs> uh, so you press a frost. Yeah, I. Uh, but even his. Okay, we'll go with frost. Okay. By uh, going to the view round the family way. Oh. But um, none of the lines are connecting. <laughs> so you have to think, you know, how do you how do you connect it back? So okay, okay, all right. You, uh, so, but the last word is happening today in my town. Uh, uh, you know, you can say, yeah. uh, you know, now I, I, I can hope, see it better. I, 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 I hope that's what he's saying. I hope for the ground to be what it was uh, 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 in the older in the older way. Right, something of that sort. Yeah, something of that sort. Right, so it could be yes. So, oh. so things to turn back to, to their, the golden days, huh? Back to the to their golden day, right? Yeah, the old golden way to the old golden day. So you know, I hope I wonder. So wonder is more like wonder, right? Yeah. So I now wonder, let's see how. When things turn back to the old golden day, right? Turn back to the old golden day, right? So the poem. You have a poem. So right? now we have it, yeah. You want to read it? <laughs> okay, I'll read it out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love to hear the rain falling down and also the winds play their notes away. But alas, what is happening today in my native town? I wonder when things turn back to the gold to the old golden day there not bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh i'm feeling right. great ashish <laughs> yes so, you know that's actually how and you can add a title and the title probably will be the golden day right <laughs> okay 
All right, title is here now. That's a bold link. I'll, I'll forward it to someone so we can give it back to you. It's a nice poem, actually, right? Yeah. Yes. So uh, so that'll be is, nice. Uh, so thanks, thanks, Mridula, uh, uh, right? Uh, and this is how actually you know AI makes things. Uh, imagine if uh, you could you, you could work with this with your team, your students, and now almost every student can tap in their creative uh, insight. And actually, that's how uh, you know uh, actual poets start writing. They first look at somebody else's poem. They figure out uh, rhyming schemes. They get inspired a bit, and they write poems like this. And then they start writing on. They start taking up on their own journey, and that's a recorded fact. So you know this is how uh, using AI we can actually go ahead and uh, uh, you know encourage our students to write uh, poems, right? And this, by the way, is a very good poem here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is really nice. I mean, we could use uh, this idea, you know, scaffolded oh, yeah. learning. I mean, for at least the little ones, this yes. would be a great help. I mean, That's make right. them feel great and nice about them. That's right. As I am feeling now, Ashish, <laughs> at my <laughs> age. I have to forward this to you. Maybe you can complete the poem as well. Yeah. All thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You know, so that's how. By the way, this is another poem that I wrote with uh, a student the other day. Uh, yeah. So the point. The point is that the point is that people think that some things difficult to do, and you need assisted creativity. And this is an example of assisted creativity. Uh, using artificial intelligence. So I'm going to give you another example, and this is a, a site called SAS Book. And what you have to do in SAS Book, and it's S A S S Book, you uh, can copy a chapter of a book, and it gives you the summary. Uh, and you can actually get three or four summaries there. So I've done one here, you know, the full book there, and it gave me a four-line summary. And uh, I, you know, running that, uh, if you notice. A lot of students, what they do is they underline parts of the book, or they make their own notes. Now, using AI, these notes can be automated. The student takes this, and of course, important to read the whole thing uh, way in advance of the exams. But the day of the exam, you can use something like SAS Book to, uh, and that's what Atul was saying. I don't need to remember everything, right? I just need a cue, and the cues come out uh, here. Okay. Uh, you also have tools for writing articles. So if you want to write an article, you can actually uh, enter keywords and uh, AI can scan the entire, uh, uh, for example, you can say, I want it out of Wikipedia. I can enter that and give you tools and ideas to write on. And you can kind of uh, uh, further uh, you know, explain those ideas. This is how you can actually use AI for faster and better learning. Uh, then you have our own Sikandar. Now, Sikandar is actually done by uh, Aru and Learnings, which is uh, incidentally developed by uh, uh, my organization. So what we do is, and we run this uh, speech case Sikandar across India. We've got 2,000 uh, students who perform beautifully on that. What it does, it, it uh, makes you speak, looks at your video, uh, converts your speech to text, uh, and sees uh, what, what is it that you're seeing, it also does things like it sees uh, how are you speaking? You know, what is your pitch of voice? Are you speaking too fast? Are you speaking too slow? Uh, are you sounding angry or frustrated by any reason? Or are you sounding pleasant? It also looks at your visual expressions and sees, uh, you know, are you smiling at the right time? Are you looking straight? Are you tilted? It looks at all that and gives the, uh, uh, the debater uh, and even the job interviewee uh, tips on how he or she can improve. Yeah, uh, and then you also have uh, what is called uh, identifying students uh, and their categories. So by the way, we run this at Shulni University. Uh, using artificial intelligence, we take, we take in signals like their uh, regularity in class, whether they ask questions in class, uh, whether uh, what the marks are in what subject, and then we categorize them into various uh, categories. You can have toppers, you have potential students, but who are not yet toppers, you have regulars, but more importantly, we have students likely to drop out. Uh, students who are not committed to their work, uh, which is people who are, uh, could have been okay, but they're not very uh, involved in their day-to-day uh, -day learnings. Or on the other side, you have strugglers, with students who are involved and coming in regularly, but they're not getting good marks. Maybe there's a gap somewhere. And then for each of these profile of students, we run different sets of uh, uh, compensation um, uh, learning uh, tuition. 
So what we then do is the struggle is given more uh, 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 simpler examples to study. The not committed students, by the way, are uh, encouraged to be more regular. And potential people have actually showed that they need to kind of improve their whole learning a little bit and come to the next level. So on the right, actually, you can see the roll number and you can see the category of every student. So the teacher knows exactly every student is in what category. And that at some level, he can then, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, deal with uh, regulars and toppers and, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, strugglers uh, differently. So those are some examples of how uh, we can use uh, AI in the classroom. And one more thing and one more example, and uh, that's the learning pathway. Atul was giving this example the other way. You know, we all use Google Path. So you can define where you start from, you can define where you want to go to, and AI can tell you in the path what courses you should take to be able to reach that. And so this way, every student can have a different learning path and reach a different destination in terms of what uh, he or she wants to reach out to. Yeah. So uh, I think that's that on the uh, on the questions you asked, Atul, on how we can actually use AI better for uh, teaching. Of course, there are a lot of tools available. Some of them are paid. Some quite a few of them are free. Uh, and uh, you know, I am always one who says, uh, explore the free ones first before you take the premium module. Yeah. Atul, you're muted. Atul, you're muted. Yeah. Sorry, so sorry. Nice. I think great, uh, uh, great stuff. I think I was never good at poems, but probably I can try. I think you should try, Atul. You know, actually, uh, can I, I can learn how to play the music, uh, the piano also? Is that you can, you can. So there are AI, uh, uh, you know, uh, programs that can help you uh, uh, play the guitar or the piano, or even understand the basic, uh, you know, those funny squibbles which are music notes. So you can do that, right? What about math? By the way, can learn how to do mathematics better. So uh, you know, if you want to do, so that's learning AI. So uh, if you want to learn how to learn any subject better, mathematics, science, physics, it's actually about uh, you know having your own learning path set and understanding what part of mathematics do you know better, and what part of mathematics do you uh, are you struggling with. So yeah, I do remember one day I was teaching you math, and that was like thirty years back, right? And uh, I looked at you and I said, Atul, you are absolutely, there is nothing can, that can be done to you on this particular exam. But, but then you sat down with me and I actually figured out that you were, uh, you needed a bit of coaching on a few things. And I coached you on that. And then it clicked. And then uh, next day you were actually second in the state in that NTSC exam, right? You remember that, right? That was... Uh, uh sort of that was not artificial intelligence that was your intelligence right? that's right but what i'm trying to say is oh, today help. ai can see what what is it that is lacking in a student and immediately pick it up it doesn't need a personalized coach and tell you to do those questions where you can pick up on uh, uh, those subjects i think math and physics that day right that's what ai can do by giving you questions it can immediately pick up that you know uh, this particular uh, kind of question is what troubles the student and then it didn't take too long for you to pick it up so that's the power of AI in teaching uh, math and sciences, even arts. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just uh, end this session, Ashish, by saying that uh, we've been experimenting at Shulini with uh, bringing a lot of AI into, into our teaching. And actually, platforms like Zoom really helps because you can do polls, you can bring gaming into, uh, into your sessions. Uh, so I'm actually very, very excited at the fact that students can actually start learning uh, things that uh, a they want to learn or they're good at or something that they want to improve in and it comes to you know you're talking about different learning capabilities of students and i remember a classmate of ours if you remember lalit who was very good at sports but just could never understand mathematics and his poor mother was always benchmarking his mathematics skills to us and our parents were always benchmarking our sports skills with him and there was always a mismatch while Ashish could never win a sports medal. Uh, Lalit was very bad at, at mathematics. And I so wish there was AI at that point of time where, uh, you know, someone could have said that, okay, uh, Lalit will probably be better at sports. Uh, let him prosper there. Let him uh, do more of sports. And uh, he'll, of course, progress in, in uh, mathematics later on. So all of this is going to happen. So different learning paths, different progression of students 
and i think all of this is going to happen in the next five to ten years already doing that at the university level to some extent hopefully i think it's going to come back into come in a big way into schools come a big way into how learning happens across the country yes i thought i I'm, i'm sure that that's exactly what's going to happen in the next few years and uh, I, you know i'm actually very happy that st louis school is coming on board and and the teach all the teachers are coming and understanding what ai is and uh, it's always good to see one own school be a leader so hopefully st louis will be a leader in uh, as usual in uh, having uh, uh, better pedagogy uh, you know implemented fantastic ashish i think uh, we don't really have any questions so uh, is there anyone oh, there is one absolutely so let's pick it up from shivani ma'am uh, how to use ai in algebraic identities and polynomials anything specific you have an answer to so uh, shivani ma'am there's no direct answer to that in the sense that uh, you know what you what what can be done is that uh, if you set up an ai learning path for students and then you give them uh, algebraic identities you can see which students are up the curve on the more difficult ones and which students are uh, struggling and you give more simpler ones to the strugglers first so that's basic learning but it helps you identify your whole class of 30 and give them different kind of pro- problems at this stage so uh, you know there'll be students who will probably want to do the basics again and again and i'll give you an example of my daughter uh and uh, you know she moved school in class 9 and uh, uh, two months before her gcse exam uh, she got a note from a teacher that she's heading for a c uh, and the reason was that when i looked at it uh, she didn't got a lot of high level uh, maths and she was struggling with the fundamentals so we worked together uh, 15 days on the fundamentals and uh, you know no surprise she got an a plus that yeah and are there any much. tools you know ashish uh, which can help uh, uh, improve any any ai driven tools uh, any softwares well, you know our own uh, there are lots of softwares our own uh, ai based learning tool is one example of that where you can implement uh, a learning path as you as we've done in shulni university right so these as of now they are not prepared uh, i mean pre existing packaged programs you need the data of the school Uh, and the student, and you come out with an answer as of today, right? So the more the data that you give to your uh, uh, provider, the better you can come and and get to be. That's the way it is. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Shivani. Uh, There's one from Atul Verma, who's asking, what kind of precautions have to be taken before going full AI? I think that's a very good question, right? Uh, I don't know whether you spoke about ethics to some extent. No. Oh, that is actually a very good question because you know the point is that uh, the huge debates happening on ethics and AI. Uh, in fact, people have not been able to solve this whole issue, you know. And people are looking at, for example, science fiction and this guy called Isaac Asimov, who said there are these three laws of robotics and follow them and make them embedded in every uh, computer, saying I will never hurt a human being either directly or through inaction. I will not co- be any cause of violence either in human beings or AI. and if there is a discord in rule 1 and 2 and always be favoring human beings uh, it's it's going to be a big issue because uh, people have actually run that uh, uh, ai models from computer games where they're shooting at people into some other interface and the ai is not able to distinguish the difference between uh, the other interface in the computer game because there is no conscious uh, and that's the whole philosophy question what is consciousness there is no awareness within uh, AI and uh, it definitely needs to be taken step by step. Good thing is all top companies have an ethics uh, department. The the ethics person in, for example, Google or Facebook or Amazon reports straight to the CEO, and they do try to come out with answers on that. There can be very different kind of ethics issues, ethical issues. For example, uh, uh, on Amazon, uh, the AI was uh, actually used for. Uh, hiring new uh, candidates from universities and what they saw was that they were only hiring males from a certain you know from some top universities only and uh, you know the reason was that the data set that they've been provided was uh, an amazon existing workers who were of that profile so uh, you know uh, women were being discriminated against so the moment they found that they took it back and they worked on it again also uh, people of color when uh, google uh, 
face ID was running, it realized that it was not accurately identifying uh, people of color. So once that was, uh, you know, uh, pointed out, they had to change their program. So the problem is that yes, uh, uh, you know, ethics in AI is a big issue and uh, there is no straight answer to that. But at our level, which is at the teacher's level, we can start using like verse by verse, right? Uh, if you, as long as there is no plagiarism and you can always put the, uh, the poem through a plagiarism check like turn it in or, uh, uh, and find out whether it's being copied from somewhere else. As long as there is no plagiarism, uh, you can use AI to kind of inspire and uh, make your uh, students do extra. Great, Ashish. I think uh, we are two minutes over our, our time. Uh, thank okay. you very much. Uh, I learned a lot. Hopefully, our teachers did too. Uh, we'd love to come back. If you have any more questions, just post them to us. We'll be delighted to come back to you. Uh, this is something that Ashish now does for a living, which is bringing AI into education. And I'm sure he'd love to help St. Luke's move the journey and move the path of, of AI. Uh, I'd like to invite anyone from St. Luke's uh, uh, to give uh, last thoughts and, uh, and uh, we can then, I think, break for lunch. Nutin ma'am was there, so I think we should invite uh, Nutin ma'am, are you there? Probably she's not, so probably Shika, you can do a word, a word of thanks and uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Atul sir and Ashish sir. It was really a very wonderful session. Thank you, Lavina, Sister Lavina, for giving us this opportunity. And as uh, Atul sir and Ashish sir has told that if you have any questions, please feel free to post to us. We'll make sure that we answer all those questions or we can have the session. If you want, we can do that also. So thank you, everybody. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Thank you, thank you, Shikha. Thank you, Sakshi. And uh, I think special thanks to Mridula, ma'am, for, uh, for coming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sir Atul, Sister Lavina here. Hi, Lavina. Thank yes, sister. Thank you, thank you very much for this lovely session. I thank Mr. Ashish. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Shivani, for arranging this. And all thank you, sister. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. God bless you. Wish you Thank all you. a great day. Bye -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Atul, sir, for the wonderful session. Of course, uh, artificial intelligence really means a lot in today's for today's generation, especially. A special thanks from the side of St. Luke's. Thank this you. is Nudan Bharatwaj again. Thank you. Thanks. Absolutely. And look forward to being with all of you again. Hopefully, COVID will be over. I yeah, that, that's an so announcement over here for all of you. Uh, at Shulani, we have uh, collected uh, some donations and uh, we've got some capabilities around concentra oxygen concentrators and oxygen cylinders. Uh, hopefully everything will be fine in your families, but in case you need help, just raise your hands. I think we can provide some support if uh, it comes to it. So uh, uh, please be safe and let's kill Corona together. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.